Y'all ready to get it on? Right on. Let's go ahead and check that box next to Courage. Welcome to the Belgian Waffle Ride Utah edition in Cedar City, Utah. Here we go. We are 30 seconds to start. Boy Jonah, volunteering, gotta love him, but ooh, almost took one for the team. I almost whacked him. Right here, I'm catching up with my fellow YouTube friend and pal, Joe Gettle. You can go check out his videos at his channel. And I might have spent a little too much time catching up with Joe, and me and him started to drift pretty far back into the group. All right, I wanted to point this out. This kid is 14 years old, 14 years old, and he's in this race. Uh, and he was actually in front of me for a long time, which is kind of funny, but really good attitude. I thought it was cool to talk to a 14 year old doing this race. Next to pros, pretty cool. This bridge snuck up on me. It was a little sooner than I had remembered from the year past. This is definitely a pinch point. Luckily I got through it pretty smoothly, unscathed crashes a little further back than I'd like to be and right after this we get onto the dirt for the first gravel sector. Now it's pretty early in the race so I, I don't want to do like what this guy is doing off to the right and just full-on sprint straight into the wind. I, I'm worried about my position but I'm not that worried about my position. Yes, the, the speed is pretty high right now, but it's not gonna stay this fast for a long time. Right here, you can see I kinda get stuck in this rut. Don't wanna crash, so I pop out of that rut, have to shed a little bit of speed, but make it out of it safely. And like I was saying, the speed is gonna come down and the group is gonna regroup. Obviously, fast people who get through that tunnel first are gonna put the pressure on so that goofballs like me that were too far back have to work a little bit harder. Somebody loses one bottle and a second bottle. That's a rough day. Gotta make sure you got good bottle cages. I'd recommend the super light, super strong Silka bottle cages. You can use code RADDADDIZZLE10 for 10% off your Silka order. Another good thing to do here is uh, take advantage of momentum. On that little climb, you saw that I just let my momentum carry me up a few spots, which is good. Here, uh, you can see the pace is high again because we're about to go through some bridges and I am trying to move up. Again, I don't want to freak out too much, but I am pretty far back, so I'm trying to move up to get closer to the front at this point. These are those bridges. It is hectic. This guy skids out. I hear a girl scream right behind me. I'm pretty sure there was a crash. I have to shed a bunch of speed just to get through these bridges. Again, one of the recurring themes in this video is going to be positioning. I was not good positioned through those tunnels. That's a pinch point. Right here is a super long, straight headwind section, and I should have been with the leaders. Here's this guy, Julian, from Canada. He ends up fourth place on the day, and you can just see how strong he is. And he knows me because we uh, met each other at the Mid-South, so he tells me like, hey dude, come on, get on my wheel. And I try, I mean, I really try. And this is him just leaving me in the dust. I try to follow him, you can see I am making up some progress, jumping from group to group, but there's a lot of wind right here, so I don't wanna burn too many matches. There's the 14 year old, obviously better at positioning than I am, good for him.
All right, now we've almost caught up to the main group. This is basically the main group, and I want to point out that this truck here is really close to the group, and that has a huge impact on how this section ends up playing out. There are guys just getting shelled from the wheel, meaning we're drafting and everything, and we still can't hold on to the speed of the group. We're, we're stuffed into the gutter, uh, and again, just guys are popping left and right because the speed is so fast. And I want to point out again, it's going to get grain, grainy here, but the truck was leading out the main group. They are going so fast because they're getting a full-on draft from a vehicle in front of them. Luckily, I think Pete Stetton or somebody, again, just carnage. Guys getting dropped, we're getting gapped. I think Stetna, right here, you can see him, had told the car to get away from the group. Um, but there he's taking his jacket off, and so eventually he pops into our group, and we do catch up to the main group, which did slow down once the vehicle gave them space. Uh, here they are again. This is a different vehicle. This is Michael Marks, who is the promoter of the race, grabbing some jackets from us, which is super nice. The temperatures were crazy cold, bizarre, and so they had, uh, they had said that they could take clothing from us as the day warmed up, so I handed him the jacket. Again, bad positioning, way too far back. I'm in mean, this scrum is what we call it in the crit world, where you're not with the leaders, you're kind of right behind the leaders where everybody's fighting for positioning. It's called the scrum. For this strong headwind section, there's about a 15 minute effort from the time we went under the bridges to the time that I finally got into that main group. You're looking at six and a half miles. My average power was 301. For some reason, normalized wasn't showing up. What's really to note here is that my average heart rate was 182 and my max heart rate was 190, just to show you how hard that effort actually was. As soon as we got on this road, I do remember this being a pretty easy part of the race. The road is very straight, kind of rolling, very wide. And this is where people are going pee. This is where people are grabbing snacks. The pace is not very high, so it's good for you to gain positioning like Sophia did just there. It's good for you to grab some snacks and start eating. And the headwind here is really strong. So you can see uh, Admiral Burge attacks because we were just going so slow and he kind of motivated me to attack so as soon as we catch him I counter and almost immediately regret that decision. I'm like I do not want to be out here by myself sucking wind going harder than I would be if I was in the group and so basically immediately after I attacked I sat up and was like I'm not going to do this to myself and so come back to the group. But then not too long after that, I'm on the chase again. Adam has attacked once again and actually gotten a gap. And so I'm like, oh, maybe I could pop across to him and me and him could, uh, you know, get a gap on the group before some of the technical sectors. That doesn't work. Uh, the group, the entire group comes with me. And so I've got all these people on my wheel and now they're passing me. And again, had I studied the course a little bit closer, had I done my homework, I would have known when the pinch, pinch points were coming and could have positioned myself better again right here too far back I'm like 30 maybe 40 spots back from the leaders and you can just see that it's chaos there's people running there's this guy in the orange bike jumps on his bike almost runs into me there's two different sections here it is nuts um, and I should have done a little bit more of course recon I rode the most important off-road sector which was the single track but I didn't really study the rest of the course as I should have and as I usually do. And this two track was where the pace got really hot. Somebody is on the front driving the pace right now. Adam Reverse has a little bit of a gap and I am hanging on for dear life at this point. Guys are getting popped as you can see. Gaps are opening and I find myself always kind of just yo-yoing and dangling on the back of the main group, which is not a great spot to be in. In hindsight, I should have just put myself somewhere in the middle of the group because then you have 
I have this theory of pressure. You know, if I'm in the middle of the group, there's pressure from behind me to hold the wheel. Whereas if I'm at the back right here, I can kind of just dangle off the back and come back when I want to. And it's not a good spot to be because I'm losing out on the drafting advantages. I'm getting gapped over and over again, having to exert more energy. Had I just put myself in the middle of the group, I probably would have stayed in the group. But as you can tell, I get popped and eventually link up with this chase group of about five of us, including uh, Carter Anderson, who was second in this race last year, so I know he's strong, and Stefano Barberi, who from BW Arizona. If you've seen that video, I've spent a lot of time riding with him already this year, so I know these guys are strong and capable, so I'm comfortable being in a group with them and know that we've probably got our work cut out for us if we're going to catch the leaders or if we're just gonna pick off as many people as possible. So for this two track sector, which is where I eventually got popped from that lead group, my average power was 278 for 31 and a half minutes, average heart rate 181, max heart rate 192. Again, hitting some of the highest heart rate numbers throughout the entire race during this sector, which would eventually get me popped from the lead group. All right, on this next clip, I'm gonna pull a pacing and I'm gonna take a shortcut and I feel really bad about it because I literally, in the last video I made, gave Payson such a hard time for cutting a turn and here I am doing basically the same thing. I passed two people kind of on accident following this guy in front of me and when you're following the wheel in front of you, you kind of just lose track of what's happening. He felt pretty bad about it. He's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know. And then uh, I'm just like, dude, let's go, come on. I, I, I don't really care if I ticked anybody else off in the group. I know that I can handle my bike on the single track section. I've pre-wrote this section. If I'm gonna catch anybody from that lead group, it's probably gonna be from the technical sectors. And so I really wanted to lead through these sections so that if I did catch people or make up some time, uh, it would be here. And I'm pretty impressed. The guy who was leading, um, he's in his drop switch. Isn't always a good sign. You know, that's kind of a roadie thing to do. Uh, but he was doing pretty good. He was, uh, I, I wasn't, dissatisfied with our pace and with our speed through the single track section. But just to give you a little bit of a rundown on how this happens um, and what the course was like, there was like a one or two single, mac single track section that we're on right here. And then there was like maybe two or three miles of gravel and then a really long single track section. So here we are, we're coming into the aid station and my strategy was if I can get a little bit of a gap on the first single track section and hold it to the second single track section, I'll be, you know, obviously leading and I won't get stuck behind people in the second single track section. So here I am trying to just solo my way to that single track section, but I get caught by some riders, that whole group passes me, and then Lance Hayden, who had had a flat earlier, uh, he catches me and passes me, and I can't even hold the wheel. Um, I hate to make excuses, but I really do hate racing at elevation, and I think it was just hitting me harder than it usually does at this race. And so here I am, just kind of solo. At this point, I can tell I don't have good legs, but maybe I could ride smoothly, catch some guys on the single track section, uh, and then just pick off guys for the rest of the race. The hard thing about racing at elevation is I can't I can't do those really high-end efforts if I try to go you know vo2 or even anaerobic I find it really hard to recover from those efforts and my heart rate is elevated for longer than I want it to be uh, and so I think that's what was probably happening a lot throughout this race my heart rate was just getting too high uh, and it wasn't coming down and also I think it was just a bad day uh, I had traveled to this race the day before so traveling the day before race is pretty hard, um, but enough complaining. The single track at this race is a ton of fun. I am stoked that they left this in because this is probably the coolest part of the race. Like I don't get to ride stuff like this in Kentucky because it doesn't exist in Kentucky. Uh, there are rocks that we're riding over. We're going through like boulders. Like this is wicked awesome. Um, I'm, I'm pumped about this. I'm having fun. You can already tell that I'm starting to catch some guys that are drifting off the, the group that was ahead of me. So I'm feeling okay at this point. I'm like, all right, put my head down, 
make the best of what I can with what I've got, and we'll see what happens. Just wanted to give you guys a close-up of the challenge getaway that I was running for this race. Actually, my camera just got knocked down, so I fixed it. All better now. It was pretty easy to lose track of where the course went. They did a pretty good job with flags. You can see all the blue flags pointing us to where the trail is, but at some points you, you hit a, a rocky sector and there's not really a trail. You know, like you can't see what's happening in front of you. So it was confusing at points where like which direction the trail went and which way we were supposed to go, but I do a pretty good job of staying on course. Alright, right here the trail goes right, but I go straight, and you can see that other people had made this same mistake, but I almost immediately am like, okay, this is not the trail, because the sand was like soft and I couldn't tell where I was going, so I have to unclip, jump over about 20 feet, and now I'm back on the trail, and some at some point when I unclipped right there, I had clipped my pedal on a rock. And it must have just hit my pedal in the right spot to where it popped off a part of the blade that holds the pedal, like that gives it the tension for you to clip in. So this entire section right here, I'm trying to clip in, realizing that part of my pedal is not there anymore. And eventually I have to stop, turn around, go back a couple hundred feet and find that little piece of my pedal because otherwise there's still like 50 or 60 miles of racing left and if I can't clip in with my left pedal not only am I not gonna do well I'm just not gonna enjoy the day so at this point I've kind of given up on catching that front group I've already turned around found that piece figured out I can't fix it put it in my pocket and now I'm uh, in the middle of the group, basically. Um, I'm nowhere near the leaders at this point because I've already had to stop for probably five minutes and I had to go backwards on the course. So uh, at this point, I'm not clipped in with my left pedal and I'm just riding and I do find somebody right after this single track section who helps me to get it to where I can clip in, but I've only got one clip. Uh, if I were to unclip, it's gonna fall apart again. So I have to stay clipped in for the rest of the race. You can see that my gel mix was hanging down. So here's a good point to uh, talk about my nutrition plan for the race. I had two flow gel mixes with each four scoops of gel mix, which is 150 per flask. That's 300 grams of carbs just from my gel mix. I've got two bottles that were ultra concentrated with four scoops each. That's about 150 grams per bottle. Altogether, that's 600 carbs. Uh, and my race was about five and a half hours, so that's about 109 grams per hour. Don't forget that you can get your float formulas for code RADDADDIZZLE, 15% off. Also, I ran into this guy at the back of this group that I caught. He said he was a big fan of the podcast. I don't know which one he was talking about, but hey, we've got two of them. We've got the Matchbox and we've got the Bonk Bros podcast. If you haven't already checked those out, the links are in the description for you to listen. Uh, Matchbox is more training related, coaching questions, and Bonk Bros is kind of just bike banter and us goofing off. And at this point, I'm really bummed that I had that mishap and I'm really far behind the leaders, but I did come all the way out to Utah to do this race, so 
I'm just gonna put my head down, enjoy the views like this one, the mountaintops, the snow-topped mountains in the background. Shortly after the single track section and getting my pedal fixed and I'm back and running was the longest sustained climb on the course. At no point during the climb does it really get steep at all. In fact, it doesn't really even feel like you're climbing all that long because it's a 16 mile climb, but it does take about an hour and I was grinding away at an average power of 264, average heart rate 173. And this is where you can see me going through groups and eventually I link up with this group near the top. Two, I didn't know this till after the race, but uh, it is first and second place for the U18 category, which is kind of cool. The two kids in front of me in green and blue were battling it out to win the U18 category, and I got to be a part of that, which was kind of cool. Now, here I'm not really attacking. I just don't want the pace to slow down. Uh, I've already just committed to riding hard for the rest of the day. And so anytime the pace sat up at all, I would just go to the front and pick it back up. Um, I know guys are probably starting to think of strategy and all that, but at this point, I'm not thinking strategy at all. I'm just thinking pedal hard to the finish. Uh, I got into a conversation with these guys, kind of funny. We're still now. Papering for Unbound. Yeah, he's lame. He guys bought his socks. Who is it? Yeah, you got the socks. I guess I guess you support his lameness. This is about to suck right up here. This is the final big climb of the race. This is where Pete Stetna actually got a big gap and was able to solo to the finish. It's a long, steep climb. Um, I was actually kind of afraid that I didn't have enough gears for it with the SRAM Explorer setup. I had a 48 tooth in the front and a 44 tooth in the back, um, but it was actually just enough gears. This is us on the back side of that hill. Uh, we've popped the other guys in our group and it's just me and the two junior riders all riding together. hit a pretty steep paved climb and they start attacking each other and I pretty much just said all right see you guys uh, it was good riding with you but I am able to pull myself together and catch back up to those guys and uh, at this point I'm hurting pretty bad. up with another guy here you know, for the last five miles me and him just chat and roll into the finish I've already told him that I can't sprint him because my pedal is broken and so I let him roll in front of me I don't want to mess up his race and here we are rolling into the finish get a nice shout out from the announcer Dave Toll appreciate that thanks for the shout out That remains the great event. Here is the Dizzle. Two gentlemen in Ryan Bennett finishing Bennett. Now, for the entire race, I was about 20 minutes behind the leaders. Pretty big gap. I finished 25th place, 308 TSS, average heart rate 167. My normalized power for the entire race, even though you can't see it, was about 260 which if you know from my Mid-South video was over 50 watts lower. Just to show you how much of an effect either the altitude or the travel had on me, regardless what I'm saying is that I did not have my normal legs on this race day. So for those of you following along, next up on the Dizzle Project Collective Racing Extraordinaire, uh, I'm headed to Sea Otter next week. I'll be there all week. I'll stay till Belgian Waffle Ride California the following week. Should be 
pretty good time. Me and Dylan will be at the Sea Otter together. I am racing probably my hardtail, which is not what they told me to do, but I don't care. And then, uh, to be quite honest, I don't have super high expectations for Sea Otter. It's been a long time since I've raced a mountain bike, so we'll see how it goes. I definitely have higher expectations and goals for Belgian Waffle Ride San Diego the following weekend. That's probably my favorite race of the year, and it's a lot of fun, so I'm excited. If you guys see me out there, be sure to say hi. Thanks for following along. Um, I am grateful for all my sponsors. Here they are. Uh, I've got all kinds of affiliate codes and discounts through these sponsors that you can check out in the description below. And thanks for watching.